Black military woman goes into a restaurant and is bullied by the racist manager. What she does next shocks everyone. The early evening sky over North Carolina was painted with shades of pink and purple as the sun began to set over the small town of Maple Grove. Captain Naomi Evans had served 12 years in the U.S. Army, most recently completing a tour in Afghanistan. As a decorated soldier with multiple awards, Naomi's service uniform carried a quiet authority, her crisp insignia sparkling against the fading light as she walked through her childhood neighborhood for the first time in years. The familiar streets had changed in subtle ways, just as she had. New stores dotted the once worn-out strip mall. The old diner where her friends used to gather was now replaced with a coffee chain. Her town, much like her life, had moved on. And yet, there was something undeniably comforting about being back on the same soil that she had left as a younger, more naive woman. Her muscles were tight with a combination of exhaustion and the emotional burden of being home again. The weight of her military service was heavier now than it had ever been, compounded by the invisible toll of the battles she had fought both abroad and within herself. Naomi had faced combat in the Middle East, but coming back to her hometown, where race relations had always been complicated, felt like walking into a battlefield of a different kind. She carried a duffel bag slung over her shoulder and clutched a letter from her younger brother who had written her an emotional plea asking her to come home for his wedding. Naomi had been apprehensive about attending. She hadn't seen her family in over five years. She had changed, and so had they. Naomi's footsteps quickened as her stomach growled with hunger. Spotting a small family-owned restaurant at the edge of town, she smiled slightly. Mason's Grill had always been known for its hearty meals and down-to-earth service. Naomi had vivid memories of the place, eating Sunday breakfast there with her parents before church. The scent of frying bacon, coffee and pancakes seemed to float on the evening breeze as she approached. Stepping inside, Naomi immediately felt the weight of curious eyes upon her. The restaurant was mostly empty, just a few tables occupied by couples and older residents. But the attention wasn't from the patrons, it was the restaurant staff, specifically the manager, a stocky, middle-aged white man in a rumpled apron who glared at her from behind the counter. Naomi took a deep breath and walked up to the hostess stand where a young waitress nervously handed her a menu. I'll just seat myself, Naomi said, giving a small smile to ease the girl's visible discomfort. She chose a table in the far corner of the room, hoping to avoid the uncomfortable stares. As Naomi waited, scanning the menu, she could hear whispers coming from the kitchen. She knew the sound of veiled gossip, the kind that had followed her all her life. She'd faced prejudice before, both in the military and at home. Being both black and a woman in a male-dominated space like the army had taught her how to grow a thick skin. But this felt different. It felt personal. The hostility in the air was palpable. The young waitress cautiously approached, her eyes darting nervously toward the manager. She opened her mouth to speak, but before she could, the manager walked over and stood in front of Naomi's table, his arms crossed. We don't serve people like you here, he said, his voice flat and cold. Naomi's heart sank. She had expected indifference, maybe even judgmental stares, but not this, blatant racism. She looked around the room, her pulse quickening. The patrons were either pretending not to notice or too shocked to intervene. She took a deep breath. Excuse me? She asked, her voice steady but sharp. You heard me, the manager spat, his eyes narrowing. We don't serve your kind. Take your military badge and go eat somewhere else. We don't need trouble here. Naomi remained seated, her eyes never leaving the manager's face. In her mind, the memories of other confrontations she had faced, those on the battlefield, those in boardrooms, and even those in the dark corners of military life came rushing back. She could feel the adrenaline kicking in, but years of discipline kept her outwardly calm. Look, Naomi said, her voice even. I'm not here to cause trouble. I'm just hungry and want a meal. I served this country to ensure everyone could enjoy their freedoms, including you. 
the manager scoffed, shaking his head with an arrogant smirk. I don't care what you did over there. This is my restaurant and I say who eats here. Now get out before I call the police. The threat hung in the air and Naomi's instincts flared up. But she wasn't going to let this man push her out. Not like this. She had dealt with far worse. If you call the police, Naomi said, standing up slowly and looking the man dead in the eye, you'll be making the biggest mistake of your life. Do you really want this to go public? The media, the attention, this little restaurant won't survive the backlash. Not in this day and age. For a moment, the manager's bravado faltered. But his anger was stronger than his fear. I don't care about the media, he said through clenched teeth. Get out. Naomi stood her ground. She had been trained to assess threats, to choose her battles carefully. Her military experience told her that now was the time to make a decision. She could walk away, avoiding the conflict, or she could stand her ground and teach this man a lesson he would never forget. I'm not leaving, she said firmly, her voice as solid as the ground beneath her feet, and I'm not afraid of you. The other customers were now fully aware of the tension, their eyes darting between Naomi and the manager, unsure of what would happen next. Naomi wasn't going to give in to anger. Instead, she calmly pulled out her phone and started recording. The manager's eyes widened when he realized what was happening. Naomi narrated into the camera, her voice calm and composed, explaining how she, a military officer, had walked into the restaurant and was being denied service because of her race. People need to see this, she said, holding the camera steady, the light from the screen illuminating her determined face. This is what racism looks like in 2024. Even after serving my country, even after defending the freedoms of everyone here, this is what I come back to. The manager tried to swipe at the phone, but Naomi was faster, stepping back. Touch me, and that'll be assault, she said sharply, and the manager hesitated. The patrons in the restaurant were now starting to speak up, some of them pulling out their phones, recording as well. It became clear that Naomi wasn't alone in this confrontation anymore. Voices began to murmur in support of Naomi, the manager's authority and control quickly crumbling. You should be ashamed of yourself, an older woman sitting at the counter said, shaking her head at the manager. You're the one causing trouble, a man said from across the room. Let her eat. The shift in power was unmistakable. The manager, once emboldened by his prejudice, now found himself outnumbered. He looked at the faces of his customers, some of whom he knew well, and realized that he had made a critical mistake. Naomi turned off the camera, but she had already captured enough. She didn't need to fight anymore. She had won. She sat back down at the table and looked at the waitress, who was now standing by the side, shaking and unsure of what to do. Can I get my meal now? Naomi asked gently, her eyes softening when she saw the fear in the young waitress's face. The waitress nodded, quickly scribbling on her notepad and rushing to the kitchen. The manager, now standing awkwardly in the middle of the restaurant, seemed unsure of what to do next. He looked defeated, his pride shattered, but his ego kept him from apologizing. As Naomi waited for her food, she could feel the tension slowly dissolve. The murmurs of the customers returned to casual conversations, though the atmosphere was different now. There was a sense of solidarity, of justice served without violence or rage. The meal Naomi received was one of the best she'd had in a long time, though it wasn't the food that made it satisfying. As she ate, she could hear the faint sound of sirens approaching. The police were coming, no doubt called by the manager in one last attempt to assert control. But Naomi wasn't worried. When the officers arrived, Naomi calmly explained the situation, showing them the video she had recorded. The officers were respectful, their demeanor professional as they assessed the situation. One of the officers, a black woman herself, gave Naomi a look of understanding and solidarity as they spoke quietly outside the restaurant. The officers left without incident, their job done. Naomi returned inside, finished her meal and left, the restaurant, her head held high. What happened next was something the manager could never have predicted. Naomi's video went viral. Within hours, it was shared across social media platforms, reaching thousands of viewers. The town of Maple Grove, 
once a quiet forgotten place, was suddenly thrust into the national spotlight. The restaurant became the center of a heated discussion about race, prejudice, and the treatment of military veterans. The manager, now facing immense public pressure, was forced to issue a public apology, but the damage was done. Local activists organized boycotts, and the restaurant's reputation was irrevocably tarnished. Naomi, meanwhile, became a symbol of resilience. Her story was picked up by news outlets, and she was invited to speak about her experience on national platforms. But for her, the real victory wasn't in the attention. It was in the quiet support she received from her hometown. Many people from Maple Grove, both black and white, reached out to her in the following days, thanking her for standing up not just for herself, but for the dignity and respect that every person deserved. A week after the incident, Naomi stood in front of her childhood home, looking at the small garden her mother had kept in pristine condition all those years ago. She felt lighter now like a burden had been lifted. She had come home not just to reconnect with her family, but to reconnect with herself. She had fought many battles, some on foreign soil, others right here in her own country. But through it all, Naomi had learned that the most important fight was the one for dignity, for respect, and for the right to be treated as a human being. As she walked into the house, her mother met her at the door, arms wide open. Welcome home, Naomi. Her mother said, tears glistening in her eyes. Naomi smiled, embracing her mother tightly. It's good to be home. Mason's Grill eventually shut its doors for good. The town of Maple Grove, however, changed in ways that no one could have anticipated. Conversations about race, service, and community had begun to take root. Naomi's actions had sparked something much larger than she could have imagined. And as for Naomi, she continued to serve not just her country, but her community, using her voice and her experiences to educate, to empower, and to inspire.